Hey guys, welcome back to Home Theater Guru's Q&A. We're gonna be starting those again starting now. I am gonna be doing a bunch of them, uh, one after the other, so I'm gonna be wearing this shirt. I do have more shirts than this one shirt, but you're gonna see me in this shirt for several uh, for the upcoming episodes. All right, so today we've got a question from Jay Lane. He says, hey bud, I guess I'm bud. I'm just watching episode 25 again. I'd like to say that I always have to turn my center channel up at least 2 dB. I must have set up a hundred times, but I always have to set the center channel up. Don't know why, maybe you can answer it. So this is assuming you've got a good center channel. Now, sometimes you may have a horizontal center channel, especially like a two-way. They have a lot of problems off axis because of where they're crossed at as you get left and right, 20, 30 degrees off axis. You're further from one driver than the other and you have nulls. So you're gonna have problems hearing the vocals and certain frequencies off axis of a horizontal two-way speaker. Three ways can usually get around it because of where they cross over at, but we're not gonna get into all that. So we're gonna assume you have a good speaker and you're talking about on axis. You're right in front of the speaker or sitting right in front of it. So usually it is room reflections. That's the problem. You've got the direct sound hitting your ears and then just a few milliseconds later, your, your ears are getting bombarded by all these reflections of the source. Now, how strong is a reflection? And you may be thinking, oh, it's just a reflection. It's not that strong. If you ever uh, pulled up at like McDonald's or a fast food place and you got your engine running and you pull up next to it and you can hear your engine reflecting or the sound of your vehicle reflecting off of that block wall. And it's really loud. We've all done that. We've all heard it. I mean, it's not a quiet sound. That's just a good example of how much energy, acoustic energy, can be in a reflection. So in your room where you have hard surfaces, those reflections can actually be very, very strong. Especially like, you know, even with extreme toe-in or you have your speakers towed in, you're actually kind of aiming at the opposite wall. And, you, you know, your speakers are going to disperse out. They're going to radiate outward in a very wide dispersion. So they're just spewing sound against all the side walls, their rear wall. Uh, maybe even the ceiling could be a, a huge factor. The floor, you know, you want carpet or something like that. It does tame it a lot. But all of those reflections are hitting your ear milliseconds after the direct sound, and it just smears it. So you go over there and you turn the trim up on your center channel because you can't really hear what they're saying. So you turn it up a few dBs. The only problem with that is you also turn up the reflections because the energy is still there. The energy that's causing the problem in the first place, the energy in those reflections. So even if you turn it up and you get to, or maybe you can hear the vocals a little better, your brain is still working overtime trying to strip away all that noise that it's getting from the reflections. It's just fatiguing. It's mentally fatiguing. Even, even if you don't realize it, one of the first things that people, that they discover or they, they notice when they walk in a dedicated room or a room that's treated, it doesn't have to be dedicated, it could be a, a living room or any room that's treated, it's just comfortable. They sit down and it's just very soothing to be in. Now you don't want a dead room that's like, you know, an anechoic chamber, but it's just so much more relaxing. You even have a conversation just back and forth. Uh, it's just everything is very clear. Your brain's not having a struggle. So at the end of the day, you've been working or whatever. It's just a very nice place to relax. So I did a four part series, I don't know, about two years ago. I'd recommend you go and watch those. The first three are just going over the different panels and telling you know, like absorption, combo, explaining them to you, telling you how to look at the specifications to look at different materials to see how they, their performance of each, you know, because you've got stuff like foam out there, it's real cheap, but it doesn't work very well. So you can actually, once you understand how to read those specs, which is very, very easy to understand them once, you know, I explain it in the video, you can make it a choice and see what materials you want to use but it also shows you what reflections you want to tackle and which ones you may want to leave, which ones you may want to use a combo panel because we don't want to just kill everything. We want a nice spacious sound, but we want a very focused, you know, vocals. We want them focused and clear. You know, we want our location. We don't want to smear a location of objects as they move around the room. So we have to be careful even whenever we go to treat the room. Now I do understand if it's a living room, you can't just go putting blank, you know, or just solid color panels over the wall. I mean, you could, but you may not like it, your, your significant other may not like it, 
Personally, I'm not a fan of it in our living room, which we've been in this house for a year now. We haven't treated it yet, and it's very echoey. So I've got the same problem. You know, vocals aren't really always very clear because it's such an echoey or just has so many hard reflections. We're gonna be doing some stuff in there. I'm gonna personally do like some printed art on some large pictures or kind of look like paintings, you know, when we're done with them and stuff like that. We're gonna hang those on the wall with acoustic material in them, just something to kind of tame some of those reflections, you know, the best you can, but we're gonna make them living room friendly. And I'll do those videos on the channel, you know, uh, before and after and kind of show how I made them and, you know, where I got them printed from. But I can almost guarantee you that's the reason you're having to bump up your center channel. Uh, in this room or any treated room, you should never have to touch that center channel. You're, it's going to be crystal clear, very focused, very, very easy to understand what's being said. Very relaxing on the brain. Just, just a nice room to be in. So, all right, Jay Lane, I hope that helps you out and answers your questions. And guys, if you have any more questions, drop them in the comments down below. That's going to be it for this one. I'll see you all for the next one.